Well, it's happening, YouTube, and all my new subscribers. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I am having a great day, and uh, we have a couple topics to cover today. But first, um, I'm going to announce the winner of the free vowel, which was sent out this morning. Um, but first, I want to thank the... Uh, I had several new subscribers, but I only got an email for one, and that person's name is uh, Mohit Lin Zuda. If I pronounce your name wrong, I am terribly sorry. All right, and then uh, the participants uh, for the free vow giveaway, I'd like to thank Zachary, uh, Rubrics, even though you're out of the country, and I did say earlier, I promise I will think of something that I can send to people who live overseas. Might not be plants, but it'll be something. I, I, I'm not sure, but I'll think of something. Uh, and then another participant, uh, Timothy uh, Hamilton. And then the other participant, his name is Alex. That is my son. Yes, he watches my YouTube channel. And I was like, dude, why did you request to win free Val? You're my son. And he's like, well, I want some free Val in my tank. Bro, you live with me. I give you all the free Val you want. Will it make you feel better if I say you won? Yeah. Okay, you win. Here's some free Val. So I loaded this tank up with Val. Anyway, so, and then I'd like to thank uh, G Family uh, for your comment. Yo! Thanks for participating. I can always count on you to be around and uh, leaving comments. Thank you so much. And the winner of the free Val, and it was sent out uh, this morning, and um, you know I had the receipt. Well, anyway, the receipt's somewhere. He has the tracking number. He knows it's on its way. All right, and that person is Zachary. I feel like I'm supposed to make it exciting like a TV show or something, but, you know, I, I, I'm here alone in the dark in the storage room in the basement under my stairs, so it's kind of creepy. Yeah. Anyway, Zachary, you won, and you have no idea. How, ma how many plants are about to show up at your house? The only thing I can tell you is that uh, you may want to buy another tank. That's my advice. All right, and since he won, I let him pick the topic. And the topic today is going to be moss. Now, I bought several different types of moss, and I'm going to describe there is a proper way to attach it, and there is a proper way to grow them. And if you, if you make any mistakes with, with moss, yes, it will die. And we're not even going to talk about Java moss. I hate Java moss. It is a pain in the rear. It is not awesome. It is not some easy moss. Why everyone suggests it, I don't know. That's like suggesting shit. Because that's what it is. Oh, and before we get into moss, I do want to say one thing. And hopefully this is the only time I have to say this. Um, I am not a wealthy person. I do not make money on this channel. So threatening to unsubscribe because I can't afford to give you free stuff is a waste of your time. It doesn't matter if I have five subscribers or 500. I don't get paid for this. It's, I do it for fun. It's a free donation of my time. And I pay a few bucks to send some plants to someone to be nice. All right? So go, go, go harass a YouTuber who has 500,000 subscribers. Uh, you know, they get paid per view. Tell that person to give you some free stuff. Anyway, let's move on. All right, so the first thing is, moss is a low-light plant. And no, I do not have java moss. I will not buy java moss. I will not accept it for free. I will not have it with green eggs and ham. I will not have it anywhere. Okay, it sucks. It's terrible. So, uh, we are going to start off first, because I do have a special moss that I want to show you. And right fast... I'm going to throw up a picture. BAM! If you're not buying your moss like this, you're doing it wrong. Don't order it. A lot of this stuff is grown immersed. Okay? And it is a lot better when someone has been propagating it in tanks like this and you've already got one that has converted to being fully submerged. Because all mosses, none of them just willy-nilly start growing at the bottom of a lake. They grow near the edge of a lake where part of it is, is exposed to CO2 and straight oxygen. Okay, 
Now they can be converted just like many other plants, but it takes a really long time. So I like to get mine already doing it. So first we're going to talk about Christmas moss, and I love Christmas moss. I put it in all my tanks. So here's a ball of it. Now you don't just take a ball of moss and float it. You don't just take a ball of moss and plant it in your tank. No, treat it like a rhizome plant. Okay, so first you need to find out where it was growing to begin with. And how you'll know where it was growing is on one side it'll be kind of flat and brown. That's where it was once attached to something. Okay, oh, and I am, I am spilling the goods. So right here. I don't know if you can, let me see if I can get some light. You can kind of tell here, yeah, right here. This is where it was growing. Now there's a couple ways you can attach this. And first let me tell you that also um, moss does prefer slightly uh, acidic conditions. So, uh, I mean, they can tolerate, you know, a pH of like 6.5 all the way up to 8. But they would prefer it slightly below 7. So to give them what they want, um, attach it directly to driftwood because driftwood releases tannins that makes your water column slightly acidic. And if you have them growing directly on top of the product that is making the water acidic, you're, get, you're pumping directly what they want into them. Okay. Also, the biggest mistake is if you ever bought java moss or any other kind of moss and, and then you're like, a month later, it's a pile of hair algae. Well, they're also low light plants. That I mean, really low. They're like Java fern and Anubias. They need to be far away from light, or if if you can't keep them far away from light, have a bunch of floaters, okay? And then the floaters will help dim the light if your light isn't one that can be adjusted, okay? So they're in the shade. They want to be in the shade. They are very slow growers. All right, so now when you're attaching this, this is a piece of driftwood I chopped up into bits because I'm going to spread some out everywhere. You need to spread it out very thin, okay? Now on here, I'm going to show you two different ways to attach it. Now the biggest mistake people make when they're doing uh, moss this way, and this is like um, a fishing line. I am going to tie this on here. First you want to take your moss and you want to flatten it out as much as possible, okay? because they do not grow in a bundle they grow like a web and then Christmas moss when it's attached to something will actually start growing out what looks like pine uh, pine leaves you know that's why it has its name it looks pretty awesome and I'll show you some of the driftwood that I have that's established so first I'm gonna decorate some on here how I see fit and obviously the more you put the thicker it's gonna be um, let's see I've got a couple really good looking pieces on here here that I'm gonna put on here do a little they like the cracks like I got this piece of wood it had some smooth sides so I took my hatchet and I just whacked it a few times to kinda of chop up the wood a little bit and give it some jagged areas that gives the um, uh, the moss a chance to kind of like java fern for it to start working its way into crevices and cling on. All right, so I have some Christmas moss on here and I, I also, what I did was I took this um, string um, fishing line and I'm gonna wrap it. Now you do not want to, this is where people make mistakes. You do not want to wrap it extremely tight. That will suffocate it. It'll it, where it's being where it's gripping onto, though that part of the moss will start to turn brown, and when a plant starts to die, even moss, when it starts to die, it spreads like a plague. Okay, so even though it's moss, just like any other plant, you start to see something dying on it. You need to snip it and get it off before it spreads, um, because it'll send nutrients to something that doesn't need it anymore because it's no longer alive. So when you're wrapping this, you do not want to wrap it super tight. You wrap it fairly loosely, okay? And I'm going to go round and round on here just a, a few times. And if you have a few pieces dangling like that, that's okay. All right? It doesn't have to be perfect. All right? 
I wrapped it a few times and then I'm gonna glue this in to that all right and I would stick this somewhere near the bottom unless you have a lot of floaters you know then you can kind of elevate it and have it sticking straight up and down um, you know so it's not getting so much direct light just put it somewhere where it's not getting a lot of direct light because algae grows faster than than moss does it also grows faster than Anubius and it grows faster than Java fern which is why they have a reputation for growing so much algae because they grow slow okay but what I do love about moss is that they provide lots of oxygen they provide uh, food for shrimp hiding places for shrimp hiding places for fry for fry fish um, and it just it looks nice I mean you put some on a piece of driftwood and I mean it really kicks the driftwood up a notch so now let me tell you where people make their second mistake the first mistake is if they're using string they're tying it too tightly so they start cutting off the nutrients that's supposed to be getting in here because think of each one of these little threads as an individual plant that needs nutrients because it does so if you tighten it too much that part is not going to get what it needs and if you have it bundled up like you just tried to tie a ball of it together everything underneath is all going to die because you just have a big pile of moss crowding each other you need to spread it out thinly and then let it do its thing now the second big mistake that people make is they don't do what you're supposed to do and that's because there I haven't met a single youtuber on YouTube that tells you this that if you're going to tie it with string after four to six weeks you need to remove the piece of driftwood go through with some scissors and snip off the thread and take the thread off yes you have to take the thread off or it'll kill it um, and I say four to six weeks because that's about how long it takes um, for it to attach itself to wood um, and I will at some point I will pause this video and pull out a piece that I have in here that needs to have the string snipped off and I'll show you what I mean but yes four to six weeks by then it should be attached to your wood and do not remove the tannins from your driftwood you will be ruining the whole point of having acidic water and the um, tannins that your driftwood I mean that your moss wants alright so let's move on quickly now I got myself this cool little suction le uh, ledge and I have a really awesome this is uh, my second favorite uh, moss and it's actually not even a moss they just call it moss because it's so tiny but it's actually a fern but it's called uh, Sawalski moss and look at this bundle of joy look at that it's also nickname is uh, uh, freshwater seaweed it grows very slow um, in fact it can take years um, but but look at that isn't that freaking gorgeous I've only seen it at one place and that's the local guy I go to who propagates moss but man this stuff is gorgeous and I'm gonna I'm gonna glue it to this platform and because this is a firm it a fern it does actually have like little rhizomes so um you know just like with Anubius and Java ferns you can glue the rhizome to something and then it just collects its nutrients out of the water column and right now I'm kinda of perplexed as to how much I should put on this little ledge here and I did read that yeah I can take like this stuff will live years and years and years and to get like quadruple the size it can take like four years but I mean look at this have this ooh ooh I want to eat it doesn't it look like some candy yeah it looks like some candy so I've got if you do use glue super glue make sure it is the gel type glue all right now you can buy super glue by like Seachum and Fluval and all of that but it, it, it's all just a way to make extra money their glue is no different from buying 99 cent gorilla glue that's gel you get super glue that is in a gel form and it is safe for plants it's safe for the water it won't harm anything okay so don't be over paranoid and think you need to spend twelve dollars on a half an ounce tube of Seachum plant glue okay because look I'm using precision pen glue it is a gel it just has to be a gel okay and it'll say gel or if you want to get scientific it's called uh, uh, cyan crolite 
Cyanchrolite. And anyway, and so yeah, I'll get this on here. I'm going to glue this underneath something where it doesn't get too much light. Oh man, that's just fabulous. Look at that. You ever seen someone get so excited over some plants? This guy. Yeah. All right, so I got some work to do. If I were to sit here and do all of it in front of you, I mean, this will end up being like a 30 minute video, which has happened, and then I end up scrapping videos or cutting stuff out. Now I realize I had been ranting for 10 minutes and I'm not even talking about plants or fish or anything anymore. I'm like talking about problems I had like 20 years ago and I'm like, man, that was just like a bummer, man. I can't believe that. Let's, look, I'm doing it right now. Okay, so just stop. All right, so let me show you. I said I would pull out a piece of driftwood that has, has had uh, Christmas moss attached to it for months. I think it's, it's been about a month, but yeah, it has a string on it still. So don't go into the moss trying to snip it. Go up through the back and just start finding your strings. I'm sorry, I, I'm, I don't have much light. I'm trying to, oh, here we go. Finding your string and you don't want to start spinning it and unraveling it because now moss has grown over that string and if you try to unravel it you're going to pull the uh, moss up with it so I'll snip I'll snip it on one side and then I'll go to the other and snip it on the other side and then grab my tweezers and pull it straight out Could y'all even see that, or did that look like a magic trick? I wasn't looking. Uh, anyway, yeah, just... <laughs> I mean, I have the... Let me see if I can do it again. I, I feel like nobody saw anything, and it looked like I was pulling off invisible string. String... Oh, here we go. String. No, you still can't see it. It looks like I'm holding on to an invisible force. Anyway, you get the idea of what I'm saying. Snip both sides and then slide the string out slowly so you don't pull the moss off and then simply put it back in the tank. All right? And now it's attached. I snipped it a few times on this side. This moss isn't coming off. It's already it's already clung on. And then once you start removing the string, you'll also notice that your moss will start to come alive and start to fold outwards and making those fans and leaves that you're looking for. So, I don't want this uh, video to go on forever. Um, if you have any questions, I, I always miss something, you know, even though like this one's going on like 19 minutes, I always miss something. If you have a question about, we're talking about moss, so if I miss something and, and you've got to ask, feel free to ask. Um, I talk to everybody. No, no one is ignored on my channel. I will take the time to speak to you all because I love talking tanks. And this is an extension of my hobby, and I enjoy it. And, you know, there, no one in this, in this house sits around dealing with plants, water, and dirt all day but me. And then talking to you guys. Oh, and by the way, the people who I've been, I am going to keep up with this uh, free plant business once a month, uh, up until winter. You can't mail plants during the winter time. Um, those people that I talk to and send them free plants, we kind of become phone pals. Yeah, they'll just start texting me, asking me advice and stuff. Hey, cool with me. I get a random question on my phone. What do I do? Here you go. So, you know, you make a friend out of it too. We call it an internet friend. All right. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all of my subscribers. And uh, like always, if you're not having a good day, get up and do something about it. Don't sit there in the dumps. We'll catch you next time.